My name is Darwin Moore in Butte Falls, Oregon. Yeah. And those, that's your grandfather? And my grandfather and my grandmother here. And they homesteaded out here? Yeah, they, they did have a homestead above Rancheria to begin with, and then they moved into town. And this is a picture, is, is this? No, not that one. We'll just ignore that for a while. And so uh, you grew up, you lived here, you lived in Jacksonville, where did you grow well, up? I grew up here. I was okay. only in Jacksonville for about a week or two. My, my dad was working on a dam up here and we didn't have a house at the time. But my mother had me, so she moved over to my aunt's house in Jacksonville. That's where I was born. In fact, it's right across from the courthouse. There's a big house. Uh, going towards Medford, just across that alley. And then you came back here and you graduated from high school here in 1950? Yes. And then what did you do when you graduated? Uh, I went in the service after a few jobs. And I spent four years and one month in the service in the Air Force. So when did you start working for the Butte Falls Ranger District? Uh, 19... 57 or 8, right in there. <laughs> and I worked for them up in for 30 years. Okay. So we'll go back to your family later, but let's talk about the work that you did for the Forest Service because this is this is a unique book. This is we haven't talked to anybody yet who's done reforestation. Oh, worked, is that right? I did brush crews after the the uh, a fire. So tell us a little bit about this burn. This burn. Well, the brush was about twice as high as the D8 cap when we first went into it. In fact, as you'd crawl out of the top of the brush, if you got out 50 feet, well, you'd drop through it, and then it might take an hour or so to get out to the road again. And so anyway, well, we, what was the name of this burn? Cat Hill. Cat Hill. And um, so the government decided to reforest it after the after the 1910 burn. I mean, that's when it burned and then it had all this brush in it. And we ended up planting several species of trees in it. So this was in the 50s. What did, so it was just, had been a brush field since 1910? Yep. Wow. It, it burned in 1800s and then in 1910 was a big one. Then it burned a little bit in 1925 again. And then it was okay until until we started reforesting it. And, 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 uh, so what did we, you do? Was this dug fir? Uh, in, in the planting, yeah, it was dug fir when it burned. And we, we put several species in, about 70% Douglas fir and 30% uh, all the other species. Like, like ponderosa pine, sugar pine. That kind of thing. Lodgepole? Um, some lodgepole. Pretty um, straight rows. Oh, yeah. Those old boys are pretty good with them cats. And they, I mean, these brushes were as high as the ceiling of those windrows yeah. when they were, and they were coming along and we burnt those windrows. So, how many cats did you have out there? Uh, we put it up by a contract, and it, the guy that had the contract would have as many as he wanted, which would be one or two usually. And we'd get so much cleared each year and we'd plant it. And it started in 19, 1960, I believe it was, and ended in 1967 or 8. Wow. So it took you a long time. Yes. We have about 4,000 acres of plantations in there. So you cleared the brush and then cat came and then you planted. Yeah, when the cats cleared the brush. Yeah, so how did you plant? How did we plant it? Did you have a hoe? We started out with a Michigan bar, which was slow, and we got into a hoe after that. And with a hoe, you can plant a lot faster. And you carried the seedlings on your back, or did somebody we carry had, them? We had, we had trays, trays at that time. It was, looked like it was pretty flat. 
Um, some places, yeah. yeah. It, it wasn't real bad in Cat Hill. There was about 4,000 acres of planting and about 4,000 acre, 4, acres of brush field with rock that was left. And there was about 4,000 acres that was naturally replanted by itself. <coughs> by the trees that were left? Or? Uh, by the natural seeding coming in from the sides and yeah. some of the trees by itself. And were those mostly pines? And uh, there were a lot of Shasta up higher, oh, and, yeah. and then it was dug fir and some pine down below, and uh, different species. Uh, I know there was sugar pine in there. So and, uh, cedar. This is a picture of maybe eight, eight or ten guys. How big was your crew? It ranged in different years. They had it anyways. It were anywhere up from oh six or seven people up to about twenty planting trees. So this was your first job for the Forest Service? Mm -mm. <laughs> no. You were getting into all the brush piling and all that stuff. Okay, so that was after after a, a timber project? See, I, had, I worked up through the ranks. I'm not college. Mm -hmm. Right. And I got it. I, I, well, I wasn't a professional. I was not what they call a Professional. I was. Mm -hmm. I had earned. A crew working for yeah, you. I had. I earned a right after I got up there. Without, I mean, I got so I, after a while, I knew mo most of it. I worked it. So, I had these big crews. But you, you mostly did planting and brushing and and reforestation. Uh, yeah, and reforestation and timber stand improvement. Yeah. Which yeah. is a lot of pre-commercial thinning, a lot of weed release. If you know what that is. <laughs> What's weed release? Weed and release, that's when the trees are coming up through the brush and the brush is crowding the trees too much and you want to release them a little bit in order to give the tree a little bit more room to grow. So you go out there with a, we was going out there with power saws and going down through it and we and cutting uh, brush around the trees so they'd have room to grow at that time. So was most of the, the control of the weeds done manually, or did you spray at all, or? Well, we tried to spray in 19, 1967, and then we got stopped. We did a little spraying before that time, but not much. And they used 2,4-D on most of it, but one or two, we, before they banned 2,4-5-T, we used it. And that, that's called Agent Orange. Mm -hmm. and, and it was really effective on brush. <laughs> but, you know, like over in Vietnam, they use pure stuff, but we only use 2%. Makes a big difference. Whenever you get a full bait of that stuff, well, it hurts you. Yeah, did any of your crew get sick from it? No. So you knew how to handle it? Yeah, we was instructed pretty good on how to handle stuff. So did you quit using it because it was... Yeah, it became illegal. Yeah. And we couldn't use it and with the government when it goes illegal, it's illegal. Yeah. So we could use 245T, which isn't quite as strong or not quite as effective. But it worked good enough that we could okay. use it. So, um, who are some of these guys? And do they, do they still live around here? Well, Mitch Boone is dead. Al Foote's dead. And this Gary and Mike Harrington. You probably heard of Gary. You probably heard of Gary Harrington. Mm, and that's Gary Harrington's in this picture too, Mike. right? Yeah, oh Mike. So they were brothers? Yep. Gary was the one that had the water hole down here, you know, and they he got went to jail over it and all worked. <laughs> I mean, Medford, they claimed all the water in the valley, and Mike had a had a pond down there, and they they made him empty it. I guess I have read about him. In the yeah. Paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they both become school teachers, and Gary teached at Eagle Point, and Mike taught up here. Picture we were looking at before. I don't want to hurt your book. Yeah, so 
How come this guy's name was Standing Doug Little? Oh, because well, he's standing. standing. He's standing. He's standing. Doug Little. Okay. I thought he might have been a Native American or something. Standing. I Doug. had some of those, but. Some Native Americans were they Klamath tribe? Oh uh, yeah, I see. Yeah, most of them are Klamath or Modoc or something. I think Terry Bettles, he must have been Modoc because one day out there, well, <laughs> he, he 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 was grabbed. He was sneaking out to the brush with his knife, and there was a deer out there, and he was going to kill it. <laughs> it was kind of hard to stop, but he he was after him. <laughs> That wasn't allowed, huh? No. It would have been a good dinner. Yeah. Okay, so these were the guys you worked with. Yeah. We'll scan those pictures. And then you have a picture of, so you did this until how long? Here, now you're in an office. Oh, did yeah. Did you work from the, did you move from the woods to an office? Yeah, that was, we had the office was a trailer sitting right over here, a mobile home, and uh, we had all our paperwork and stuff in there. And these guys are these are all guys are all dead, but us two, Manny Poole, Mitch Boone, and Vern Oberg. So, did you always work for the Butte Falls? Yeah. Ranger District. Right. And this. We had an athletic group, and that's what this was. Is that all softball or basketball mainly. Basketball. So those were all people that worked at the at the at district. The, at one time or another, they yeah. all worked there. A lot of trophies. Oh yeah, yeah. We were not too bad. Was there also a softball team or? or yeah, we had a softball team. In fact, this we used to. We just like me. I've been in on four state championships, uh, uh, a regional, and I went to two Western Worlds. Wow! Yeah. See, that's oh, airborne. That was quite an area there. See, this wind blew all these tops out. Wow! Where was that? Uh, that was. Up towards Fish Lake up there. That's what I was guessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Oh boy, I just, I was right at the end of my, it was, I got out, see, 50, 60, I would, see, I got out in 63 and it happened just after that, on that airborne sale. So what's this about? Okay, that was the Camp Two Flat, up here by Willow Lake, mm -hmm. and uh, we said we couldn't keep trees in here, so we set up these plots, <laughs> one acre plots. Come to find out, well, the rabbits were so heavy in there, they'd go through and they'd, under the brush and stuff, and they'd nip these trees off, and then you wouldn't have any more trees, so we had, that's when we ended up clearing it because they wouldn't venture out in an opening they were afraid oh, to I see. <laughs> coyote or something and get them. Wow. So that's how you kept this the is how it, Yeah, this is, well, this is how we found out what was doing it. Because this was a study plot. Yes. Wow. We had, we had three of these in the open areas and three of them in the brush field like that. So you figured that out on your own? Didn't yeah, we... We run, we checked it all the time till we found out what was exactly doing it, and so then we changed our method and we got trees to grow <coughs> out there. And if you've been up by Willow Lake, well, you you know what they are. They're big. Yeah. Yeah. So on the Dead Indian Plateau, they have gophers and things like that, and they put bait out for them. Did you ever bait the rabbits? I didn't. Yeah, we baited rabbits. Did you have gopher problems too? Oh yeah, I'm, in fact, as I trapped gophers after I got out of the Forest Service, for, well, I quit in 2008. And uh, I trapped eight years up on the dead end end. And uh, believe me, there is gophers up there. Yeah, there are. There's a million of them up there. You put one, those, that'll, 
Did you have metal things that you stuck in the holes, or? Yeah, but they're they're not like that. They're only traps about this long, and they they got a deal like this, and the gopher wanders through this way and catch, he catches yeah. them this way. Yeah, you got some of those. Yeah. I got I got one out there. I could show you what they look like. Yeah, I know what they look like. Okay. This is I think it's just treating the land and getting it to regrow. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Got a brush field and then you have a forest. Yeah. So and you were part of that. Yep. I had about 12 years of that actually I was head of reforestation. Did you go back? I've gone back and looked and they've logged a lot of that up there now and that and up there along 37 up there you can see where they logged it and they pulled it to, logged it out to about 25 feet apart with a lot of these trees and they're coming they're getting they're growing well. So, yeah, I and this isn't the only area because, like I said, I was in Brushfield like Reclamation. So I had Camp 2 and I had Imnaha, that and Rustler Peak. And this was all Brushfield and several, you know, several more of them. And we used a, we used a, I took a track mac in it later, like in Cat Hill, and cut the brush all the way down to it was about that high and you could be for about five years there the animals really used it. The deer? Yeah, deer and whatever was there. Cats? Yeah, <laughs> everything. The, yeah, they was all in there. Uh, it was pretty neat. Yeah. Okay, I found a picture of your office. Okay. So, that was in the 90s or the 80s? When was that? Well, I got out, I got out in six, let's see, 80, 86. So this was before then. So you quit? Oh, this, this is approximate year was 1970. It's written writing on the back. So you were working in an office then? Yeah, I was. Like I said, I was in charge of reforestation TSI, and I had different people doing different jobs, and, and then I'd go out and check on it and see what they were doing and how they were doing it. And uh, if we had any suggestions, well, we talked it over and figured out what we ought to do. How many guys did you say had your crew at that point? Well, and I had maybe a hundred and maybe 100 to 125 or 30 people but i only had i only had six or seven six seven people that was permanent the rest of them were all temporary but what i this is another point that i liked was i could take all the people and put them busy out here and they had a transportation to work and back and uh, and these people that i hired for foreman they kept them pretty busy they didn't screw off too much. So. Did they get paid for the hours that they were on the road? Uh, yeah, they do. The, the government always paid. I mean, when I first went to work there, we didn't get any. But then we got halfway, and then we all of a sudden was getting both ways. So actually, actually, we was only getting five and a half to six hours work. And the rest of it was riding time, depending on where you went on the district. Sounds like a great career. I enjoyed it.